Hey, my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Motor. Welcome to the last and final part of Fundamentals of Data Modeling uh, series of videos. So, after learning how to conceptually and logically model our data, today we are going to examine how to build a physical data model. Stay tuned! A physical data model represents that final touch how the data model will be implemented in the specific database. Unlike conceptual and logical data model, which are platform and solution agnostic, physical implementation requires defining low-level detail that may be specific for the certain database provider. Transitioning from logical data model to physical data model requires more iterations and fine-tuning of the entities and relationships defined in the logical data model. The same as for logical data model, there is a whole list of necessary steps to make your data model implementation success, so let's focus on the most important ones. Choose the platform. This is a step that you can't skip, because this decision will shape your future design principles. Translate logical entities into physical tables. The logical entity is just that, a logical entity, and it exists on a more abstract level since a real database doesn't support that level of abstraction, we need to translate that entity into a physical unit. This means we need to provide information to the underlying platform on how the data should be stored. In simple words, define the data type of each entity attribute, be it a whole number, decimal number or plain text. Additionally, each physical table should rely on keys to ensure data integrity and it's your task during the physical data modeling process to set primary foreign and unique keys. Establish relationships. Based on the key columns, the next step in the physical data modeling workflow is to create relationships between the tables. Apply normalization or denormalization. Similar to what we've already examined in the logical data modeling phase, check and confirm the tables are depending if you are designing a transactional or analytical system, normalized or denormalized to a degree that ensures the most efficient workflow for the specific system. Don't forget, in OLTP systems, tables should be normalized to a third normal form to reduce data redundancy and efficiently support write operations such as insert or update, while in OLAP systems, data may be denormalized to eliminate the number of joins to make read operations more performant. Apply table constraints. There are dozens of constraints that you may apply to ensure data integrity. It's not only about the keys, which we've already mentioned previously, but also other logical checks. I'll give you a simple example. Let's imagine that your table contains a column that stores the data about students' grades in college. Can a student be graded with a grade 100 or 1000 or 1? Of course not, there is a finite list of possible grades in the range of 5 to 10 or A to F in some other systems. So why not define this constraint on the column, thus preventing the insertion of values that don't make sense, be it due to an error or by leaving the end user possibility to enter whatever they want, create indexes and or partitions. Indexes and partitions are special physical data structures that reside within a table, and their main goal is to increase the efficiency of the data model. Explaining indexes and table partitioning is out of the scope of this course, but keep in mind that both these features may significantly affect the performance of your data model, both for good and bad. It's fair to say, especially for indexes, that implementing an efficient indexing strategy is mastery on its own. Table partitioning represents a technique of splitting one big table into multiple smaller sub-tables, thus helping the database engine to reduce the scanning time during the query execution. A good example would be partitioning per calendar period, let's say years. Instead of keeping all the records in one huge multi-million or multi-billion row table, you can split this table and create multiple smaller sub-tables containing records for the specific year. Don't be confused when I say sub-tables. These are not real new tables in your data model. 
everything is happening behind the scenes and it's just the way the data is physically structured under the surface. Extend with programmatic objects. Almost every database management system will let you create various programmatic objects, such as store procedures, functions or triggers. Explaining each of these objects is out of the scope of this course. All these objects serve different purposes and help you efficiently complete various tasks. However, their implementation is de facto standard in almost every data platform solution. And it's hard to find any OLTP or OLAP system which doesn't rely on these objects. With all points mentioned previously, the main benefit of having a physical data model in place is to ensure efficiency, optimal performance and scalability. When we talk about efficiency, we are obviously having in mind the two most precious business assets, time and money. Unless you think that time equals money, then we have only one asset to consider. To simplify, the more efficient your data model is, the more users it can serve, the more faster it can serve them, which in the end, in most cases, brings more money to the business. Here is a brief overview of the key characteristics of each of the data model types. Let's start with the purpose. You've already learned that the conceptual data model provides a 10,000 feet high perspective of the business entities that are of particular interest. On the other hand, a logical data model puts these entities into a logical structure, assigning them specific attributes and defining how these entities are connected between themselves. Finally, a physical data model represents a low-level detail of how the data will be physically implemented in the database to ensure optimal performance and efficiency. The target audience for the conceptual data model is not only data professionals, but also business stakeholders. Logical data modeling involves data engineers, data architects and data analysts, while physical implementation should bring in database administrators and database developers. Finally, don't forget that the first two stages, conceptual and logical data modeling, are platform agnostic, whereas the final stage, physical data modeling, requires choosing a specific platform and technology. That's all folks. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos about fundamentals of data modeling. Just as a reminder, in previous five weeks, we covered core and uh, key concepts and techniques for data modeling in general. So this is not something which is specifically related to any tool or any technology. We talked about different concepts and techniques for modeling your data, starting from uh, designing all online transactional processing versus online analytical processing systems. Then we also talked about uh, conceptual data model, logical data model, and finally physical data model. If you enjoyed this series of videos, please make sure to subscribe to Data Mozart channel and see you soon in the live stream related to data modeling techniques for Power BI. Thank you. Mm -hmm.